Hello, everyone. Welcome to Startup Grind. Uh, as you know, that we are world's biggest community, and we are working with entrepreneurs all around the globe. We are the community for the world's entrepreneurs. We educate, inspire, and connect entrepreneurs in 600 cities around 125 countries. And uh, our values, we believe in making friends, not contacts. We believe in giving, not taking. We believe in helping others before helping yourself. So let's start today's event. And first of all, there are some startup crime specialties. So now this is the time to welcome our guest. Please welcome Shuja. Hello, uh, Rana sir. Uh, happy to be on board with you. Uh, thank you so much, Shuja, for being here. Uh, we are so much thankful for your time with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. So uh, as you know, uh, we mostly talk with the speakers who are working and doing some very amazing jobs around the world. And as your story is here, and uh, we hope that your story will make a lot impact on the life of other startups and other persons who are working day and night for betterment of their uh, lifestyle and also for their countries. So Shuja, uh, what would you like to say about yourself? How would you like to introduce yourself? Um, well, as you've said, K, uh, to connect with entrepreneurs, I am. I would also like to say that I myself am an uh, entrepreneur. And uh, I like to better myself uh, by constantly reading and engaging with interesting people and uh, visiting new places. Uh, because uh, I'm a type of person who believes in uh, uh, constant uh, self-development uh, so that we can be a better service to the society. Uh, I believe that, uh, that the pinnacle of uh, uh, personal satisfaction or uh, uh, I think it's a, a very virtuous thing to uh, do as well that you uh, think about what value that you can add to the society and uh, what is something new that you can introduce to it. So uh, I feel like if I, I myself am a better human being, I would know better skills, then I would be able to solve more and more problems and uh, be a better contribution to this whole system. Uh, so that's why I keep on learning new stuff. Uh, even something uh, that is not even directly related to my uh, uh, business venture or my field of study or anything. Like recently, I started to learn how to cook as well. And uh, it's been an, an interesting uh, experience of that as well. And uh, I hope to continue this, uh, continue learning more and more things so that I can make myself a better human being. Good. So uh, what would you like to tell uh, the people about your company, how how that company comes into form and how you started your journey? OK, so uh, the company name is uh, the STEM Educators, uh, but uh, that is now not how we started. Uh, we started with a different name and uh, with a different uh, idea in mind. Uh, but as in the startup world, we often hear okay, sometimes we have to pivot uh, to find the right product market fit so that uh, uh, we are able to best uh, uh, serve the community. So we started with the name of Big Bites, and uh, its goal was to uh, spread uh, maker culture uh, and uh, uh, community mobilization. That is one of the integral part of the, uh, maker culture and uh, shared learning and uh, uh, peer-led uh, uh, and collaborative learning. Those are some of the essential components of uh, maker culture. And we wanted to uh, uh, expand on that. Um, but we realized okay, the name, uh, that the name that we have chosen, a Big Bite, it doesn't necessarily convey to the larger community over here that what we, what we actually do. So we have sort of rebranded ourselves to uh, these STEM educators, which uh, in the name, it conveys that uh, we are uh, people who like to educate uh, STEM education. And uh, 
so what we do is uh, that we provide courses on uh, skills such as uh, programming robotics game development web development and uh, 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 maybe if you would just like to excel in maths or uh, some any topic related to engineering or science uh, then we are involved in that and because we feel like that these are the topics that are most relevant in today's society so uh, we are trying to push towards uh, having uh, like uh, this education these subjects need to be taught uh, with as much as importance as any other subjects uh, in every school, you would see that uh, uh, students are learning uh, science, uh, chemistry, physics, bio, and uh, English, Urdu, math. Uh, but uh, uh, they don't consider robotics programming or uh, maybe like game development or web development as an essential subject. Uh, but the need of the uh, today's society is that we need more and more people who can make websites for our uh, projects or uh, who can make more uh, games for the larger community or who can make uh, more uh, products that would solve real life problems. So uh, these are the skills of the future and uh, we're primarily focused on these that uh, uh, everybody should know uh, what these are because they are not only related to uh, technology as per uh, say but they are uh, they also teach you problem solving and they, they, they teach you critical thinking because uh, in programming we find that uh, there are multiple ways multiple algorithms to solve uh, the same set of problems and uh, we learn that some can be more efficient than the others so uh, we learn to uh, see the opposing uh, or maybe a different point of view that and we learn to explore more ideas to solve the same problem so that we can come up with something innovative something that hasn't been thought of before so um this is what have uh, this is something what we have become uh, now and uh, but before our uh, purpose was we, we wanted to see small maker spaces in every uh, little school uh, in every other neighborhood where children would have the opportunity to just go there and find the right mentors and find the right tools so that they can experiment um, because I hands-on learning and experiential learning that is one of the most effective form of uh, uh, of learning so uh, but, uh, but uh, unfortunately here we are faced with uh, a huge lack of resources and uh, that is what we faced as a problem as well that we cannot just like spend uh, we didn't have that much capital to spend uh, to create uh, maker spaces in every other neighborhood so we had to take a different approach on how to make this venture more sustainable uh, more scalable uh, so that uh, it would keep on adding value to the society even when we are not a part of it it would become a structure of its own so that it would grow by on its own and uh, people would come in and they would contribute further and uh, they would take it forward because uh, obviously we are not the owners of it we are just like trying to make everybody see what is the value for the children uh, for for the kids for the coming generation and uh, i often say that that uh, it would be a tragedy if we still don't consider these subjects as important as the other ones uh, such as the uh, as i mentioned before biology chemistry or mathematics uh, so every school and uh, should uh, turn to this that they should find out programs that they can teach at their school for programming for robotics for game development for web development and I think the parents should also push for it, that the parents should go into the schools and question the headmaster, why are they not teaching programming to their kids? Uh, I mean, it has become an essential skill and uh, it, it doesn't cost that much. There are so many resources available online. Uh, people can consult us, the principals, the teachers can consult us. How can they introduce these same things into their own schools? And uh, we would be happy to facilitate. Uh, because we would just like to see that much development happening over here and uh, uh, not and, and no other student should miss out on this chance. Uh, whenever we encounter any new student, we always have this first introductory session and uh, we learn about their interest and preferences and what, they, what do they like to do for fun so that we can actually uh, tailor our learning material according to their uh, best preferences. 
so there is always this question that i ask those students uh, is there any of your classmates or any of your friends uh, maybe in your extended family somebody who is doing a similar uh, activity like this maybe learning programming or maybe doing uh, uh, building circuits or maybe doing robotics so the answer is almost always a no so that kind of gives me a constant reminder the need of this thing it's so huge that wherever you encounter a new student uh, only that one student is doing it because their elder sibling had uh, the knowledge of uh, the importance of these subjects or one of their parents were an engineer or a computer science person so the schools are not doing it and the government is not doing much so uh, i would say that the parents need to take charge of this and then uh, continue with this and uh, go to the headmasters and ask them why are they not teaching these subjects to the students good but uh, i would like to ask about shuja uh, that's all about your uh, work about your startup about your company but now this is the time for shuja only so how how shuja is now uh, uh, founder and a ceo of a company how shuja started where this shuja comes from from, from where part of the world so kindly also tell us you know the story mostly the stories uh, which which is from your childhood that are very amazing story so keeping uh, away of the business just describe shuja and then we will move forward how you come where is your city where you belong and uh, what you have done and how uh, uh, what's your journey as you started from a student or from childhood then what kind of things you do so can you describe that thing sure so uh, i am a lahori if uh, that term is valid over here uh, i was born uh, over here but i spent most of my childhood uh, in multan i i as an as an adult i still haven't had the opportunity to visit that place again but uh, i'm uh, hoping that i would visit it again uh, meet some of my old teachers over there um at the time when we came back to lahore i was about maybe 14 or 15 years old and uh, uh, we didn't have i didn't have access to facebook so i lost connection to all of my students uh, over there in multan but then one by one i started finding them uh, again on facebook and uh, we started connecting on uh, uh, whatsapp and uh, some of them have moved to lahore so i have had the pleasure of uh, rekindling those friendship as well and uh, uh, i think i also think about this like what made me the person that i am uh, self reflection is an important thing to have in uh, one's personality i often do that uh finding out uh what made me different and what made me uh, uh have this work that i want to do something extraordinary i don't want to live a normal life so i think it uh, goes to this one uh, particular uh, uh belief that i have is that uh, uh i reading will constantly make me better and uh, it is uh, a virtue to become a better uh, human being than you were before so uh, i think that has been one of the defining elements of my personality and uh, you could say that uh, uh, i received a normal education uh, uh, in the educators uh, uh, in lahore and uh, then punjab college but then i think uh, i i say this uh, that, uh, that one of the best thing that happened to me was uh, uh, joining uh, information technology university it gave me that environment that i was striving for that uh, uh, to aim for excellence and to aim for something higher than ourselves so i i met some uh, professors over there some uh, teachers over there who were always pushing us to do better so i think that was uh, one of the uh, uh, high, uh, one of the key development points and after that i had uh, the absolute uh, pleasure of joining makestan which was a uh, maker space over there uh, it was the uh, it is the it was the only academic maker space in pakistan which was doing a wonderful work and i felt so welcomed uh, over there the learning environment was so helpful that uh, i quickly took to it and i became a volunteer over there 
and very uh, because i was so active about it i was so passionate about it they gave me the opportunity to uh, represent them on several events such as the uh, plan 9 and plan next launch pads and uh, uh, then there was this uh, conference in peshawar uh, they uh, i mean that was the first time that i uh, was visiting a uh, uh, an extra, uh, an out of uh, town station uh, on the expense of somebody else and uh, i was their responsibility uh, but uh, uh, i was very passionate about meeting new people and uh, conducting our workshops over there and introducing these subjects to those people over there so that also gave me an exposure of what is actually out there i had seen lahore and um, i often say this that uh, uh, we sometimes tend, tend to forget that we are living in a privileged uh, uh, privileged environment uh if you go out of some of the big cities of pakistan things are not so uh well so that kind of gave me that perspective and uh, i wanted to do something more with makistan that i wanted to introduce these things into schools as well and uh, that is how my uh, uh first venture uh, big bites came into being that uh, the mentors over there they pushed me that uh, i could start something of my own uh, with the knowledge that i had gathered over there and uh, uh, with the experience that i had and with some of their support their huge moral support and some of their monetary support as well i was able to buy some equipment and start a robotics club in my own school because that's the place that i thought that i should uh, i would have the a uh, better chance of uh, succeeding that i could just go and ask my own principal that i would like to launch a robotics club over here and he generously agreed and uh, we started a a, a pre of course robotics club over there and uh, we did some sessions and uh, we taught some students some things and a lot of people uh, came up to us uh, learning more things and some of them even came out of town so uh, and then there was this event uh, that was coming up the maker fest lahore so we prepared some of those students to uh, represent their projects in that maker fest and uh, uh, they had an ex uh, absolutely excellent experience and from there on another campus of the same school reach, uh, reached out to us and asked us that if we could do the same activities in uh, on uh, in their uh, uh, campus so we accepted and that's how some uh, monetary value got involved into this and uh, we thought uh, that that also kind of gave us a little bit of perspective that uh, this needs to be done at a much larger scale i mean initially my goal was just to have a robotics club at my own school but uh, when we realized how big the uh, uh, issue is uh, we expanded on it and uh, we reached that we started creating a business model around it good amazing so uh, as uh, you talking about mikistan so more uh, parents who don't know about that so that that's, there's a question for that the parents who are unfamiliar with the technical aspects of this education how can they understand and what courses are you offering right now okay so uh, yes we often do get this query sometimes parents reach out to us that uh, they are not familiar with uh, anything related to coding or computers or technical devices so they don't know what to do so for them i would advise that they can actually get involved on their own as well i have conducted uh, teacher trainings and i have actually taught some parents as well because they thought that it is something very interesting to get involved with and it is very easier to learn it's just that you have to think that you are have the capability to learn new things as well and uh, so uh, the people who would like to understand maybe if i can put this into some simpler words that uh, at the moment we have devices with which we can create stuff like maybe uh, if i would like to control the uh, temperature in this room with uh, my mobile phone rather than the remote of the ac or if in such a, a scorching heat i'm coming i'm going back from office to uh, my home and, and i would like my room to be cool even before i reach there i could have an uh, iot installment over there and uh, i could tell the ac to turn off even before i go there 
and in the morning if i have the curtains drawn i could uh, tell uh, i could have them opened up just uh, by detecting the light that is coming into the room using a light sensor or there could be so many other things that people could build their own snappers or people could own, build their own clappers using some sound sensors and uh, some mini computers like this big called uh, microcontrollers and these things are, are available over here and uh, uh, students who go for electrical engineering or computer science degrees or mechatronics engineering, they use all of these tools. But the thing is that these tools are built in such a simpler way that even kids as young as eight or seven or six years old are able to build uh, devices using these uh, uh, electronic devices. And uh, they are able to build projects like maybe their own calculator or maybe their own pagers or maybe a traffic light system or maybe a bluetooth controlled car so parents just need to accept that that they can actually like uh, talk to someone to understand a little bit more and maybe they can reach out to us and uh, uh, we will be happy to guide them like what are the softwares that we will be using and what are the tools we will be using to teach their kids and the next thing that you asked were like what are the courses that we are offering right now uh, well recently we have uh, been, uh, we have started a partnership with Colabs uh, in Lahore. It is uh, one of the largest growing uh, co-working space. Kind of, it's becoming kind of like an uh, innovation hub in Lahore. And uh, uh, they're really happy to host us over there because uh, we are producing the next generation of innovators. So uh, over there, we are launching these three new courses, uh, Junior Programming, Introduction to Scratch, that would help uh, the students cover all the fundamentals of uh, programming and then there is junior robotics with the uh, arduino the microcontroller the mini computer that i talked about uh, with that we can build devices like uh, home automation systems or bluetooth controlled cars or uh, maybe uh, uh, an rgb light mixer or uh, maybe a laser light uh, laser show controller and uh, then we are also offering game development with Unity. Uh, and uh, uh, there are different ages for all of these courses. Uh, but uh, also because there are some students who have uh, who are introduced to these subjects very early on. So they are very skilled. And they might be ready for the advanced courses as well. But there are students who have not been introduced to these subjects. And they might be older. But uh, they need to start fresh. So they can uh, take the uh, junior programming courses as well and start from the very beginning. Uh, so the question for, uh, for the parents especially, what can the parents expect after joining your Makers Club? Yeah, so uh, one of our eventual goals is that uh, the students should become so capable that they should be able to go online and search for available resource. There are so many uh, educational resources available online and they should be able to use them and learn by themselves because uh, one of the key skills of the future is not going to be like uh, it's it might be uh, a graphic designing or a content creation or market digital marketing or these sorts of things but something that would uh, be above all of this is the ability to learn new skills very frequently and that happens when people have this idea that they can actually go online and find relevant resources to learn new skills and they can get that discipline going that uh, they uh, would have that uh, uh, stamina to actually consume more and more educational content and uh, make themselves their better uh, the better version of themselves so we hope that after they join our makers club uh, eventually, after a couple of months, they would be able to find tutorials about what they want to learn online and they can start to learn by themselves. So that is what we hope for, that they can uh, get to that place where they are making themselves better by their own effort. I'm sorry, you're mute. Yeah, uh, sorry for that. Uh, and, uh, and I can understand that the parents should be very knowledgeable about all the things which you describe and 
hope that they can get a lot of benefits from this interview. Uh, so now, Shuja, uh, can you tell us about the hurdles you faced during all your journey? What kind of hurdles was that and how you overcome all of you, that difficulties and then you become successful? Um, I think one of the big ones that I faced was uh, uh, that uh, uh, the uh, giants who are sitting at the authority position, uh, who are the decision makers of any educational institution, uh, whether it is private or whether it is uh, government, they are they are not very much convinced with somebody who is who looks like me somebody a young 22 or 23 years old who walks up to their office and tells them that they need to introduce these new subjects into their curriculum so convincing them has been a huge hurdle for me um, not only on the private side but on the government side as well initially we did want it to go for uh, being a social enterprise and working for the government schools for free uh, so for that, I was told that I should take an uh, NOC from the education department, and I did apply for that, but uh, this, that was not granted to me. So we were not even permitted to perform in any of the government schools for free. So uh, that has been one of the big hurdles. The other one has been that uh, uh, there is just like uh, not much training to go around when somebody is starting uh, uh to their own venture i i was not uh, very well trained uh in the beginning how to run my own business i mean some of the technical things are really very jarring uh, uh i did register a private limited but i had no idea what are the compliances with the fpr and with the secp and uh, how to take on new partners what are board members and what are uh, annual general meetings so these were uh, these all came with experience and uh, but these are not actually uh, taught at an early stage or at uh, uh, generally they are not taught at school so i had a difficult time getting around all of these all right that's uh, amazing things which you described here so message for the youth you have for all the new generation the new startups the new company what's the message for them all i i think one uh, lesson that i took to the heart from uh, my uh, training at nic lahore was uh, perseverance uh, persistence that is definitely required uh, for starting their own uh, startup uh, somebody who is a salaried employee of a company i understand uh, the satisfaction that you get uh, when uh, the assurance that you have uh, when you are actually um, receiving a paycheck every month and uh, on every month end um, so it is a difficult thing to let go of that uh, but even with even while being a salaried employee, people can learn to educate themselves on financial matters. Uh, start reading books such as uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and uh, Zero to One by Peter Thiel. These are uh, some of the uh, 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 books who were recommended to me by mentors at NIC Lahore. And uh, so I read on... Uh, I, I read all of these and uh, these have been very helpful. So book reading has to be one of the key skills of an entrepreneur, uh, like constantly learning. Uh, there was this one thing as well that uh, uh, there was this session uh, with uh, Miss uh, Barbara Oakley at LUMS, uh, learning how to learn. Uh, and uh, later on, I asked her a question uh, that uh, at what threshold does it become ineffective? Uh, if somebody is learning uh, so many things and uh, they are spending so many, uh, so much of their daily time into consuming more and more educational content, for an entrepreneur, at what uh, stage does it get uh, uh, ineffective that they should not consume more content and they should let the uh, the uh, some of the uh, learning to get absorbed? So she said that as an entrepreneur, you're in a whole different game. Uh, you have to consistently keep on learning new things so that you're on top of everything. And uh, uh, there is not like a number for that. So uh, it's a difficult thing to be in, but it's, it's also very rewarding. 
it, it's not like hey, you have to think on these terms that you have to leave, uh, leave your job right away and start something of your own. There are other ways to make oneself financially better, uh, financially stable, building more assets and cutting down on the expenses. These are some of the very basic things. And uh, don't never putting all your eggs in one basket. Uh, you do not take risks, uh, uh, uncalculated risk. You take calculated risks and uh, um, you find out more and more things that you could develop that could be sustained for longer period. You don't think like uh, you don't do something uh, half hearted. You uh, don't uh, just like uh, throw in some of your money based on somebody else's advice without actually looking into the matter and uh, try to do things which are actually uh, don't try to find loopholes in the system. Try to understand the system so that you can actually, um, uh, the system will eventually benefit you. Uh, but people here, they try to evade taxes and uh, it actually comes to bite them back. Uh, and uh, so that's not the right way to go forward with it. So I would say that just keep on learning new things. And uh, uh, one, of, uh, one essential thing that everybody needs to learn about is their financial well-being. How are they going to manage their finances? So, uh, that is something that is not being taught. And other than this, uh, find a mentor. Uh, having some of the uh, very good mentors at Megistan and then and I see Lahore, that has helped me a lot. And uh, it is always better to have somebody who is maybe 10, 20 years ahead of you, who is guiding you on life matters. Not a teacher, not an instructor, but a mentor. This is a term that is like very much missing in Pakistani landscape, but we should start using it more and more and uh, people will come around this idea. Okay, Shulia, so here's the last question for you. Uh, what about the mentors and personalities you are impressed a lot from Pakistan and some international personalities, please? Okay, so... Um, some of my personal mentors, uh, Ali Murtaza, he's a designer, one of the uh, top designers of Pakistan, and he's a, a master of uh, having uh, organizing creative events. And uh, uh, then there is Umar Shahzad. Uh, he was the technical lead at Makistan. He has done uh, some exceptional work in introducing maker culture into Pakistan. And uh, well, that, he has an interesting story as well that his bachelor's was in uh, uh, electrical engineering and then his uh, master's was in computer science. And uh, as he kept on finding out, finding out like uh, where his interests lie, he kept on changing his field. So now he's studying instructional designing at uh, Utah uh, State University and uh, he's doing a PhD over there. So uh, these are some of the few. And uh, then there is Abhijit Sinha. He runs Project Defy in India. Uh, and the way that he has set up that organization, uh, I would like to learn more about uh, that. And I would like to learn more of what he has actually learned about education. What do we need to do uh, to make developments? And uh, yeah, so these are some of the few that uh, I would like to mention here. Amazing. Uh, it's uh, really, uh, it, it was full of knowledge, the things you described today with us. And uh, I'm so many thankful on behalf of Startup Brand for giving us your golden opportunity and the time, which, uh, which is the most costly nowadays, uh, because everyone is busy. And, and after COVID, there's a lot more troubles also for the business things. So thanks for being here. And, and, uh, we may thankful. What would you like to see about startup grind and any message? Okay. Uh, uh, yes. So I think if I understood correctly, you would like me to mention something about startup grind. Yeah. So uh, some anything what you would like to see about startup grind, and if you want to, uh, if you want to describe, uh, if you want to say something to our startup grind family, is is there something you want to speak about startup grind family? Uh, yes, uh, I would definitely like to thank you for having me on board and uh, for hosting us while we visited uh, your place recently. Uh, it was uh, a, a delightful conversation that we had with you, and uh, for having me on board over here. 
and uh, uh, i really like the motto that uh, make new friends and uh, help each other grow because that is what we very much need in this society that uh, we're not actually uh, uh, we're not actually uh, actually causing hurdles for people to grow but we're actually helping them uh, we need that uh, uh, environment of support so that each of us can become a better version of ourselves Okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, beautiful event, and uh, thanks for see of STEM Edmund with the new guest. Till that time, take care. Bye bye.